Hi, my name is Brendan Toole. Welcome to the Irish Film Festival in Australia. And uh, it is a great honour to be speaking to the star of the Irish troubadour Anya Tyrrell and the writer, director and producer Dr Enda Murray. Hi guys, congratulations on the film. Um, can, you, can we maybe start by just um, finding out how on earth do you know each other and how you got to decide to work on this great film together? Well, I think uh, I went to see um, a gig in Sydney. It must have been about uh, 10 years ago where Anya was, was playing and we started chatting. And um, then um, I became the Sydney stop when Anya was traveling on the bus. And, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, my house has got a uh, playground out the back. So I think that was a big attraction <laughs> for um, on, on his kids. Um, but um, I made um, a two uh, video clips uh, to on your songs and um, uh, I, I've always been interested in the migrant experience and um, Anya is very eloquent and very articulate and someone who's able to express herself not only with words but also with um, with songs and um, so um, I was always um, very impressed with, with um, on his uh, skills and um, uh, enjoyed working with her. But um, a, couple, a, a couple of years ago, Anya um, wrote in her blog about her experience with domestic violence. So um, at that point, uh, it was um, a, a, a story that I thought um, needed to be heard. So I was um, keen to, to work on a, a longer um, documentary. So that was where the idea for the um, the documentary came about, but it obviously wouldn't have happened without Anya's um, participation and, and support. That pretty much sums it up, I think, there and there. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so Anya, you, you you felt compelled to talk about your um, overcoming. You know, we we learn in the film. Um, the core of your storyline being the overcoming domestic violence. Um, you were compelled to talk about it on, on your blog, and then how did you feel when Ender suggested making a film about it? Um, I wouldn't say that I was like compelled to talk about it or, or it to feature in a film at all, but um, I did find that after I had bought the bus and I was touring around um, this country, uh, that a lot of interviews and different things I was being asked, you know, why did you buy the bus and what are you doing and da da da. And so for quite some time, I would just sort of skirt around the issues as to what had led me and my three kids to hit the road. Um, and, you know, that was because I was healing and I was going through stuff and I didn't really want all of that to be part of my uh story i suppose in terms of like my music uh, life um but i realized it was quite incongruent at some stage there and i didn't like being on interviews and different things and not kind of just being who i am you know and and speaking straight and um so yeah the idea to release the blog post was at, at that time was to just have my story there and if someone wanted to talk to me about why um, I was on the road and what my journey had been like to get there they could read about it and then they could choose to interview me about that or not but it wasn't going to be a question that would um, be have to be hidden and secretive and I, I think that's a lot of the time with domestic violence and speaking about it it's 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 not out there you know it's kind of and the shame comes back on the victims not onto the perpetrator where it should be because we're kind of in secret and not not talking about it so i put it out there really to release that for myself um to be able to just be like this is part of my story but it doesn't define me it's not who i am um but if you want to know about it this is where it is and you can go to this place on my <laughs> my blog to find out about it um 
And when Enda approached me about um, that that post and about um, the idea of a film, um, yeah, I, you know, I of course there's bits of me that are like, oh, I don't really want to air all of that stuff, but I I said yes because the stories of survivors are so rarely heard. What we hear in the news feeds and what we see on television and um, newspapers is uh, the dramatic events that lead most of the time to us losing women to this. And we don't hear the stories um, of coming out and of surviving for lots of reasons, for stuff tied up with court, for defamation of character, for um, the healing process that it takes to be able to speak about this. And so for me, it was, I feel like in a way I, I'm in a place and a place of strength of where I am, that I felt, well, yeah, it has to be spoken about and there has to be like positive stories out there of, of what can be achieved, I suppose, in the aftermath, because I think we're so often told you know that like you'll be a victim forever you know like that's kind yeah. of the narrative around it and to me it was yeah. important to to show a different narrative which i i, I end it handled beautifully in the film because you know it's not the only part of the film you know that he he doesn't it's part of it yes but it's not the only part absolutely i i have to say that my favorite um line in the film was when you you spoke to your, you were a primary school teacher in melbourne was that correct and uh, and the school said you know we've given you wings go and fly i thought that was just really was the perfect line in, in the film and um, that's when i choked up anyway um and and you have you've gone on and flown and and it's so wonderful to to uh, unfortunately we can't go to festivals now it's kind of there was an extra melancholy about the fact that we were watching the the, the last uh, big festival before the lockdowns you know um, what I, I really also resonated, I know, Ender, you've worked a lot um, with um, multicultural storylines, especially with people who have moved to Australia um, for, uh, or, you know, born into different cultures in Australia. And I know, Anya, you, you really, um, you know, I am, you find it important to deal with this sort of um, dispossession, perhaps, you know, living in a foreign country, bringing your kids up Irish. Can you, you talk about the importance, uh, the, both of you, really, about um, the strength of culture through song and story and dance, um, and, and in the words that you, you, you write about in your songs? Yeah, did you want to go first, Enda? Oh, well, um, uh, I... I made a conscious decision to um, uh, call the title of the film um, Irish Troubadour because I think that it um, uh, was a nod to uh, the troubadours of old. And um, uh, the troubadours were people who told stories and um, sang and, and uh, traveled from, from place to place. So. Um, I think that's a, a very noble um, a, um, a job, a very, a, a very noble occupation to have, and, um, and and I don't think it's valued enough in this day and age. Um, so that's a nod to the uh, traditions in 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 Europe, but also to traditions in Ireland, uh, where uh, you know we have a uh, tradition of um, musicians and harpists and um, uh, storytellers and and then finally with um, with on his own uh, family her being um, a daughter of a, a musician um, and the, the the strength in the um, the family connection so um, I thought that uh, the uh, yes this it should be acknowledged um, when we when we have an opportunity to to do that and and um, I think uh, finally yeah it, 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 I think in current in in the current society that we have it's becoming more and more difficult to be a 
um, you know, a traveling a, a storyteller, a musician, an artist, um, someone who makes the living from 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 doing that. So um, they were the uh, the reasons for for me. Oh, lovely, and um, yeah, I I know that uh, living here was a hard like it's hard to be away from culture when you have it um strongly in your dna you know i come from a uh, father that's a musician my grandparents were dancers like there's a lot of music and culture that is very deeply within my bones you know <laughs> and when you're um off country in a way you know like i am not on my own land and so to be able to continue to try to practice culture here or to pass that down to my kids um yeah it, it's reinventing it in a new place you know like i'm not likely to take my kids to an irish pub in like <laughs> in the middle of sydney to you know say hey this is your culture you know so you have to find it in um in all the other ways so for me keeping on singing some of those songs and playing tunes and and uh, they, they've been around Irish dancing and um, Irish sessions here and and uh, around Irish culture in that, you know, a, a lot of people traveling through from Ireland might stay with us or we, we might, you know, meet up with Enda like we used to on the road when we could travel. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's important for me to to show them what they have, but then also um, which I think Enda, you know, was able to capture in the film that for me, they're standing on sacred, uh, incredible land here with a culture that's a lot older than, than even ours, you know, 60,000 plus years here. So for me, it's important that they also understand that there is a living, breathing, um, vibrant, incredible culture uh, on this land and of this place. And so we have to, you know, respect that. And, and it's a strengthening, you know, I've, I've found the more that I've worked with and toured with and um, been around indigenous uh, musicians and community, like their sharing and their strength in their culture, you know, makes me, you know, well up with pride and strength in in my culture too and and when there's stories that are similar or or practices or traditions it's like oh yeah we do that too and um yeah so that's that's a really important thing for me as part of respecting our own irish culture here is to know that you know we're also standing on land that's so rich in culture as well yeah i i really um i found it really interesting the way you you um are so inspired by indigenous culture and and how you also have a, a, a mutual, I suppose, uh, a feeling of some empathy towards, um, you know, the results of colonialization and the impact of language on language on culture and the importance of keeping language alive. Um, so I thought it was a really powerful message within the film. Um, and uh, can I just ask you, um, I noticed that there was no funding for this film. So congratulations on creating a film without any um, any grants? Uh, how did you go? How did you manage? Well, with great difficulty. Um, <laughs> oh, look, um, I, I think one of the uh, problems about uh, making films in, in Australia uh, about Irish uh, topics is that you, 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 you need a um, you need an Australian uh, enough in, in Australia to um, to get funding from Australia, but um, you're certainly not um, considered Irish um, back home because you're 12,000 miles away. Um, and um, I think, uh, you know, Anya talks about this in, in the film. So that was one of the um, things I was very happy about because uh, uh, I, th I think it is important you know, especially when we're um, uh, having kids and, you know, 
where the, where do your kids stand? Um, are, are they are they Irish? Are they Australian? Um, but yeah, uh, getting fund funding for a um, an arts arts project is like a, a tangible expression of this of this issue. Um, and uh, mm. I, I was lucky to have um, you know people around me who were um, uh, happy to contribute. Uh, and when they weren't happy, I twist, twisted their arm. Um, but um, th you know, they were they, they, they were good people who um, uh, helped out on the on the technical side, and also um, we did a, a crowdfunding and um, raised some money that way. But it it is it, it's tough um, uh, making uh, films with with small budgets, um, so. Uh, yeah, it's hard work, but um, I suppose it uh, was a, a labour of love. I have to say, Anya, it was really inspirational to see you, uh, you know, getting on the bus and, and, and taken to the road. Uh, it's a dream I've had ever since I saw Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and I haven't quite managed to do it yet, but there is time. Um, can you just tell it, you know, just before we go, um, you know, the world turned upside down a year ago, and um, for artists and singers like yourself, um, the impact has been huge, and the, perhaps the support hasn't been so forthcoming um you know so how, how are you getting on and and what's the situation with with performing now and going, going forward? forward yeah yeah uh, it's it's quite it's quite depressing really <laughs> yeah i to be honest it's this this last uh lot of cancellations have really hurt like they've just you know it's i, I think this time last year we were all like you know all right yeah we just got to get through this we have to reinvent we have to figure this out and then it's been so many times of like getting met up and then you know uh cancellations and then getting it up again and cancellations so um yeah i don't know i i'm sad for the arts community in general um especially those of us that rely on live touring um, you know, that's my income, that's my bread and butter, like festivals are a huge part of how I've survived and so is interstate and overseas touring. So for me, this is a massive uh, change and um, I'd like to say that I can see us coming out of this soon and that there's, you know, mm -hmm. hope, but it's still so uh unsure what the landscape here and overseas is looking like you know um but uh at the same time you know like i think the music community is a beautifully resilient and strong community and um we'll work through it i think <laughs> we'll, we'll get there but um yeah it's been a big lifestyle change for myself and the kids who've been used to um you know touring in the bus um, and also touring overseas, you know, we've done Europe and America and in, in caravans, not buses, but, you know, similar. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really, it's a real big, you know, gear shift for us to be in one place for uh, this amount of time, which, you know, there's some beautiful things about that too, you know, there's silver linings in that as well. Um, but yeah, I do hope that, um, I mean, I don't have massive hope for the government in assisting the arts at, at present, but I do have hope that the community at wide is really beginning to understand um, how this is affecting the arts community and that, that we need, like, arts are an essential service, you know? <laughs> we do need could us. could not agree and, more. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, I do have faith, you know, like last time when we opened back up, people just poured into gigs and were so incredibly supportive and um yeah i have i have faith that human to human will will get through this you know it takes community and and you can feel that yeah yeah well look i think that's a that's a beautiful thing to end on um all i can say is i really hope to get to see you performing live on you because the film i really really enjoyed the film congratulations and it was a, a wonderful story um and uh, yeah, let's all let's all stick together and help each other through 
and, uh, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Thank you, Brandon.